yummy, yummy, yummy. I've got food in my tummy and I love to exercise. Woohoo! Food and exercise. Could they be two of the most controversial topics on the planet? And how do we know what's the right thing to eat and how do we know the right way to exercise? And that's probably a bazillion dollar question that you could get a bazillion different answers for. And how do we make it simple and easy to understand? Well, here's a great thing to consider. I have two tractors, Tom and Terry, my twin tractors. Uh, they're both Dave Brown tractors. Uh, they were made at the same time. They just look different because we've painted them different colors. Uh, here's a great question though. Do they work the same? Are they the same tractors? Even though they've come from the same factory, are they the same tractors? And of course the answer is no. Uh, let's say we had twin humans. So let's say we've come from the same egg, so we're identical twins. Are we still the same humans? Of course the answer is no. So why do we have exercise programs and why do we have eating plans that are the same for everybody? And I'll rephrase that and then just something to consider because I'm always asking questions about this. I'm an exercise professional and my driving force every day is to make sure that this process of being uh, healthy, fit and strong, eating yummy food and loving your exercise is a simple process. But I always ask this question because this is why I think it's so simple and why you can't give the same thing to every person. Let's just say, because I've got twins here, let's just say we had 20 sets of identical twins. Identical twins. And we gave them all exactly the same calories, all exactly the same food, and exactly the same exercise program. Would they look exactly the same? Now, I don't know the answer to that because that's never been done. But I've got a sneaking suspicion that the answer would be no, because... Even twins, one might like one food, one might not, might not like that food. But even if they were given identical food and they had to eat it, would their metabolisms be the same? Would their uh, amount of muscle tissue be the same? Would their uh, endocrine systems work the same? Would their central nervous systems fire at the same speed? Interesting question. What about... Uh, you can go to social media, any social media platform probably, and buy a diet and buy an exercise plan or both. And unfortunately, uh, most of those won't even ask uh, if you're a male or a female. You'll just put your money in your credit card details and they'll send you an eating plan and an exercise plan. And you might pick that eating and exercise plan because you like the look of the person who wrote it. But let's just say we've got a thousand people this time and we give them all exactly the same food, exactly the same calories, exactly the same exercise plan. Will they look like the person that wrote the plan? I think it's a really important question to ask because every day people say to me, I've tried this diet, I've tried this exercise plan, I've bought this program and I want to look like that. Well, are there some more determining factors to what we look like than buying a program of somebody that we like the look of? I think that it sounds like a ridiculous question. But the next part of that is uh, you're an individual person. Even if you're an identical twin, you are still an individual human being. And I'll ask those questions again. Is it possible that you have your own unique muscles? Now, we, we all have the same muscles, but you have different numbers of, of firing mechanisms inside the muscle. You have a different amount, a, amount of muscle. You have a different length of bone. You have a different speed of metabolism. And that changes, of course, over the course of the day. So let's say you're a twin. One twin might do nothing all day, uh, be inside a warm room, and uh, be watching television so their brain's not working and their body's not working and they're, they're, nothing's changing so they have a really a, they've no metabolic requirement the other twin might be outside using their brain really active getting sweaty and they've got a really fast metabolism so is it possible that you're a unique individual that has all different things going for you? You like one food, you don't like another food. You like a particular exercise, you don't like another exercise. Uh, you have a different uh, genetic background if you're in a group of a thousand people. There's a different cultural background. There's a whole heap of things that affect the way we eat and the way we exercise or what we eat will affect us differently and what we, how we exercise will affect us differently. So how do we keep it really simple? How do we make sure that what we're going to do is going to work for us? I do it a bit differently, and I'm just going to ask you these really special questions. I like to work backwards rather than forwards. So rather than this is what you should eat and this is how you should exercise. What if we started up here and said, 
What do you want? <laughs> What's important to you? Because everybody's goals are different. Some people want energy to exercise to climb mountains. Some people want to have energy to exercise to be a mum. Some people want to have energy to uh, be a CEO of a business. Some people are elite sports people. Some people are engineers and their brains are working every day. We have different requirements. So first of all, what is it that you want? And then I think there's four things that we should be able to demand, demand, Rowie, demand from your eating and exercise plan. And tell me what you think. I think we should be able to demand a stack of energy. If you're going to invest time and effort into eating and exercising a certain way, should that plan or should both of those plans give you a stack of energy? Number two, should you be performing at your best? Whatever you do, whether you're a mum or a CEO of a company or both, you might be both of those, you're an elite athlete, you're a landscape gardener, you're a builder, you're an electrician, you're a car mechanic, I don't care. Whatever it is that you're doing, you should be able to, de- to perform at your best if you're fit and strong because your exercise program's working for you. So number one is energy, number two is performance. Number three is that you look and feel good. And when I say feel good, yes, from the inside feel good, but also feel good to touch. Wouldn't you like to be able to feel your hip bones and feel your shoulder blades and feel when you touch your body, you like the way it feels, but also when you look in the mirror, you like the way it looks. So number one is energy. Number two is performance. Number three is look and feel. And number four, whatever result that you want from your eating and exercise plan, should you be able to demand it? So once we know what it is that you want, If the next step to that is, what's your lifestyle? How much time do you have? How much effort do you want to put in? Uh, How much sleep do you get? What kind of foods do you like? What kind of foods don't you like? How can you possibly tell somebody this is what you should eat if you don't even know what they like? And it's not even just about, because some people say, I don't care if people don't like to eat beans, they should just eat beans because they're good for them. But what if it's a cultural reason or a religious reason or an ethical reason that people don't want to eat the food that you tell them to? Some people are vegan vegetarians because they don't want to eat animals. It's not that they don't want to eat that particular food, they just love animals. Some people, are they don't eat beef because it's a religious belief. Some people uh, don't eat a certain way that a food is cooked or a way that a certain food is grown because of religious reasons or ethical reasons. So I don't want to eat that food because I don't like the way the government grew that food. There's a whole heap of reasons why people eat. So what do you like to eat? What don't you like to eat? Why do you eat that way? Shouldn't somebody know that about you before they're telling you what to eat? Uh, I think these questions are really important because ultimately the process of having a fit, strong body is easy. And I, I use this on a regular basis. If you get puffed, you'll get fit. If you lift heavy, you'll get strong. But that's what I share with my Max International Exercise Professionals. Uh, there's three parts to being a top level exercise professional. And if you are one or you work with one, uh, I hope this makes not just common sense, but this is really logical. If you're really fit, how will your life be different? How will your body be different? So you'll be a fast fat burning machine. You'll have a brain that works better. You'll have better circulation, better hair, skin and nails. You'll have a strong immune system. You'll you'll burn up all the food you put inside your body. They're all the things that happen when you get fit. So should we know how to get people fit? Of course. That's what we do as exercise professionals. Should we know how to get people strong? And if I've got a strong body, I can then get fitter because I can't sprint, I can't get puffed if I've got a weak, frail body. So I have to know how to get people fit and I have to know how to get people strong. And if every human being on the planet was fit, as fit as they could be, and everybody was as strong as they could be, so I'll go back to my twin tractors, I'll go back to my twin example, If every single person, whether you're an identical twin or not, if you were the fittest you could possibly be and you were the strongest you could possibly be, how would that affect your life? Would your life be better physically, emotionally, mentally, the whole bit? Isn't that exciting? So as an exercise professional, do you know how to get people fit? Do you know how to get people strong? But the third part of that professional process to me, so one and two is anatomy and physiology, but number three is common sense, logic and communication skills. Because yes, you can get fit by getting puffed and yes, you or you will, yes, you can get strong by lifting heavy, but what about the person's lifestyle? What if they don't like going to the gym? You say, well, you have to go to the gym and lift weights because you have to lift heavy. What if they don't want to go to the gym? What if you tell them you should lift rocks at home in your garden and they don't have a garden and they want to go to the gym? 
isn't it our responsibility as coaches, as exercise professionals, and I call myself a personal exercise coach, a results coach, because I want you to get the results that you want in the way that you want to get it. So I have to be able to customize and tailor your fitness program and your strength program to suit your lifestyle. Now, along with that, of course, comes your eating plan. And I'm very passionate about this. If I would never tell anybody what to eat because I'm absolutely committed that if I can get you really fit and I can get you really strong, what happens to your brain? Your brain gets healthier, it thinks better, and if you're thinking more clearly and you can make better decisions about everything, is it possible that you'll make better decisions about your food? And that's really exciting to me because that has been my experience, that if I get people fit and they feel good, if I get them strong and they feel good and now they've got a fit, strong body that's working effectively, they automatically change the way they eat. I've never had anybody in my life who's gotten really fit and gotten really strong, so they're about to go sprinting or they're about to go to the gym and lift heavy or they're about to go on the martial arts mat and box and punch and they want to have a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken or eat a packet of cookies. Never happened. <laughs> because they're fit and strong, as they get fitter and stronger, they automatically change their eating plan. The human brain... It, 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 I just rely on physiology for that. When you have to go punch, when you have to go kick, when you go sprint, when you go lift heavy, in the phosphate system at 100% effort, the beautiful thing about that is that everything else shuts off. When you're in fight and flight mode, everything else that well, everything that's not required for you to fight and flight shuts off. Your hunger mechanism shuts off. Your thirst mechanism shuts off. Your, even your immune system and your sex drive shut off because your body's got to go at 100% effort, which is really awesome because when you know that you're going to be sprinting, you don't feel even hung, hungry or thirsty. You just want to go and do. And I'm so passionate about this because food is such a controversial topic Everybody seems to argue about food. Everybody from electricians to uh, x-ray uh, mechanics, <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, everybody's got an opinion about food and we have the right to, don't we, because we all eat food, so of course you can have an opinion. But to tell people what to eat, really? How do you know what they like to eat? How do you know what they don't like to eat? How do you know why they're eating at the moment? How do you know what times of the day suit them best? How do you know what places they like to eat in? How do you know uh, their metabolic rate, their base metabolic rate, their respiratory quotient? They're all really important questions that if you don't ask the question, you won't know the answer to. So two things there. If I get people really fit and if I get them strong and if I do it in a way that's going to suit their lifestyle, so I've now got a fit, strong human, is it possible that they'll work out for themselves what works best from an eating plan point of view? And even if it, do if it doesn't, which I absolutely passionately believe it will, but even if it doesn't, wouldn't we need to know, if we're going to give advice about food, wouldn't we need to know first, what do you like to eat? Let's always include that in your eating plan. <laughs> what don't you like to eat? Let's never include that in your eating plan. Why would you eat what you don't like? What do you eat now? Why do you eat that way? You've obviously got a certain way that you've put your life together. Why do you eat that way? And then you want to find out the ethical reasons, the religious reasons, the, the, uh, the, the passion for food or the non-passion for food. You need to find out all that stuff. Why do you eat food? Some people eat for pleasure. Some people eat for performance. Some people eat for a combination of both. Wouldn't we need to know that? Where do you like to eat? Some people like to eat at restaurants and some people like to eat at a dinner table and some people like to have a picnic and some people like to have a barbecue and some people like to have a combination of all of those. Shouldn't we know that before we give information about food? So what do you like to eat? What don't you like to eat? What are you eating at the moment? Why do you eat that way? Where do you like to eat? When do you like to eat? There's so much confusion about three meals a day, five meals a day, eat one day, don't eat the next day have a meal and then don't eat for 16 hours or 24 hours. There's a whole heap of stuff about when to eat. Why don't we just ask people, when do you like to eat? When are you hungry? I love this. Eat when you're hungry. Stop eating when you're full. Enjoy all of your food. Enjoy every exercise that you do and have a body. Are you ready? <laughs> that is full of energy. You perform at your best. You look and feel good in the mirror and you're getting the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan. 
That's what I want to do for everybody. And for me, it's a simple process. Get fit, get strong, do it in a way that's going to suit you, that you love, that it fits into your lifestyle and fits into your time frame. And then everything else might take care of itself. And if it doesn't, if we're really going to have to talk about food, let's ask all of those questions first before we start giving out information. Because I'll ask the question again. If I had a thousand people and I fed them all the same food, the same number of calories, and I gave them the same amount of water and I gave them the same exercise program, will they, will they look the same or even worse or more ridiculous question, will they all look like me just because I eat that way and I exercise that way? Of course not. I'm going to say that passionately. If I feed a thousand people and exercise a thousand people exactly the same way, will they all look the same? So how about we make sure that people get fit, they get strong in a way that's going to suit their lifestyle. And if we're going to give information about food, how about we ask all of those questions first so that they can design for themselves. And I'll, I'll ask this question to finish up with. If I say to you, if you were your own high performance eating and exercise coach, what advice would you give yourself? And nobody has ever said to me, I think it'd be a really good idea for me to not do any exercise. I should sit on my couch, eat junk food, have takeaway food delivered, drink copious amounts of alcohol, don't do any exercise, keep the windows and doors closed so I don't get any fresh air and sunshine. I think that's a really good thing for me to do. Nobody has ever said that. I trust the human race that if I say, if you were your own eating and exercise coach, what advice would you give yourself? And here's what the answer usually is. Rowie, I think I should do differently what I'm doing now because I don't like the way I look or feel now. I think I need some more fresh air, some more sunshine. I need some more healthy food. I need to drink more water. I need to do some exercise. And I just go, yep, great idea. Let's do it. How about rather than tell people what to do, we ask more, ask more questions and rather than give people a blanket uh, program that says this is what everybody should do, see I've got two tractors, they both come out of the same factory but they both look completely different because we painted them differently. They might have two different lifestyles, exactly like the people that come into your life. Two different lifestyles need to be looked after differently. So let's get people fit, let's get people strong, let's do it in a way that's going to suit their lifestyle. Could that be a good idea? <laughs> Thank you for coming to Romax. Thank you for investing time with me every day. I'm here every day. My goal is to make sure that the, the experience of life is be healthy, fit and strong, have a career or fitness uh, business that you love, career or fitness business, that'd be cool. So please be healthy, fit and strong. Inspire the people in your world to be healthy, fit and strong. Have a career or business that you love. Be financially free so money is not a challenge in your life and have great relationships with the people in your life and appreciate all of the relationships, even the crappy ones, because they make your life so much better because they make you tougher and stronger. And how's your relationship with yourself? That's what Romax is about every day. So thank you for coming to Romax. And if you think that Romax can add value to somebody else's life, please share it with them. May you be living your life to the max. So you can sing happy little songs like this. I feel good, na 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 na. I knew that I would now, na 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 na. So good, yeah, yeah, so good, it's amazing out here. Woohoo! Live your life to the max. <laughs>